Hey everyone! So, as E3 approaches with the reveal of the new Legend of Zelda game, and it being the 30th anniversary of the Legend of Zelda, what better time than to go nuts about Zelda! So, in this series of videos, we're going to be talking about the Legend of Zelda games and the Zelda timeline, which arguably exists or doesn't exist, but according to Nintendo, because of their lovely book, Hyrule Historia, it exists. So, we're going to be following the timeline. So, to begin this series, you might be thinking, well, he's going to begin with the first game. Nope. As a matter of fact, we're starting with where it all starts. With The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. And this is an awesome game that is sadly kind of overlooked, people, and gets a bad rep, but... Let's take a look at it. This was released five years ago, exactly, on the 25th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda. So, let's get started! Just so you guys know, Skyward Sword is the first game in The Legend of Zelda timeline. And it takes place during two eras of the timeline. The era of the goddess Hylia and the Sky Era. There is no other game before it. And the two main elements of this game are the ancient battle and the reincarnation of the goddess Hylia, and two, a return to the surface. What came before it was the creation story, which was told in Ocarina of Time. Let's start with that. So the world was created by the three goddesses during the time of chaos. Din, the goddess of power, created the land. Nehru, the goddess of wisdom, created order. And Farrar, the goddess of courage, created the diverse inhabitants. Upon leaving the world, the goddesses left behind the Triforce, three golden triangles. It is said that any wish the possessor of the Triforce desires will come true. The golden goddesses departed from the world. They created and left the Triforce in the care of the goddess Hylia. It is unknown why the Triforce was left behind, though. During the era of the goddess Hylia, many demons arose in pursuit of the Triforce. The leader Demise, the demon king, tried to take over the world with his evil power. After a battle against the demonic forces, Hylia gathered the humans who had survived, along with the Triforce, onto a plot of land and sent it into the sky. She positioned a heavy barrier of clouds between the island and the sky 
and the land below to protect the humans <laughs> and the Triforce. The plot of land highly ascend into the sky became known as the Isle of the Goddess. The islands in the sky where the surviving humans dwell became known as Skyloft. There the humans lived with the guardian birds known as loft wings, given to them by Hylia. Only a few individuals on the surface knew of the existence of the goddess and Skyloft. After a few thousand years, their story was forgotten and became legend. And so begins The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. <laughs> And let me tell you, folks, this game is amazing. This is possibly one of my favorite Zelda games, and I've played just about them all. I have just about all of them. But this game is beautiful. The art style in this game, it looks like a pastel painting, and it's gorgeous. It's as if they knew the limitations of the Wii hardware, and so... <laughs> They ran with the advantage of that and went for an art style rather than realism. And it paid off really, really well because this game is a lot of fun. And for motion controls, I think this is the best example of motion controls on the Wii because they fit this game perfectly. Now, if you guys want to play this game, you are going to need a Wii Motion Plus to add on to your Wiimote if your Wiimote doesn't have a Wii Motion Plus already built in. So the goal of this game is to rescue Zelda from the clutches of Demise and stop Demise from taking over the land. Now this game came out for the 25th anniversary, so it's five years old, but this game is still lots of fun to this day. And this game I bought when it was new, and it hasn't gotten old to me. It's still a lot of fun to this day, so you should pick it up if you find it. Now, I don't know why, but there are tons of Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword haters out there, and this game got great reviews when it was released, so I don't know why there are so many haters of this game, and you know what's funny is that they said about the upcoming Zelda Wii U that they were going for neither a super cartoon look or a realism look and it's funny that they should mention that because that's the art style that kind of this game follows while it's sort of a painting look the link is obviously inspired by the link model from twilight princess so i don't i'm really looking forward to the to the next zelda game as a result of the events that took place in Skyward Sword, Raru, the Sage of Light, constructed the Temple of Time, which contained the only existing entrance to the Sacred Realm, where the Triforce was located. With power stronger than both Time and Master Sword, Raru sealed the Sacred Realm. The pedestal holding the Master Sword was closed behind the Door of Time and the key to opening the door. The spiritual stones of the forest, fire, and water were protected by their respective people. The Triforce was placed in the Temple of Light, located in the Sacred Realm, which was now isolated from Hyrule. Protecting the Triforce in the Temple of Time, Raru became the guardian of the power of the gods. So yeah, this is a great game, folks! Yeah, it was on low hardware, which was the Nintendo Wii, but they really pushed the Wii to for this game. It's it's a beautiful game, and it's fun as all get-outs. You actually feel like you're playing as Link, with you know how you... You know, and with the nunchuck, you... So, yeah, 
If you can find this game, definitely add it to your Wii collection. It's definitely worth it. It doesn't deserve all the flack that it, it gets. So, join me next time when we'll discuss The Legend of Zelda, The Minish Cap. Until then, I'm Retro Devo, and keep the Zelda playing up. Oh my god, she's taking off her clothes!